Thank you for being a part of today's Bible study. Uh, we're in the end of John chapter 16, and tonight at 7 o'clock, Brian English is going to be talking to this on the Maywood Facebook page. I really hope that you'll come and be a part. Let's begin reading in John chapter 16, verse 25. Jesus said, I've said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but I will tell you plainly of the Father. On that day you will ask in my name, but I do not say that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you because you've loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and I am going to the Father. His disciples said, Yes, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things. and do not need to have anyone question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. And I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. There are a lot of things we could talk about in these verses today, but I'm going to zero in on one topic, and that's the need for humility. Now, if you were reading the text rather than listening to me, you would notice the word we know in verse 30. And if you look at Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 2, or the religious authorities in John 9, 29, they all three have something in common. They came to Jesus with what they knew. Well, whenever we come to God with a we know statement of our own, Pride is probably lurking around the corner. Pride is very deceptive and it's easy for people to slip into pride without being aware of it. And I think that was the case with the disciples. And I also think that's why Jesus gave them a lesson in humility and told them that as in his hour of persecution they were all going to run and take care of their own safety. When we think about humility in our culture it doesn't seem to be a very big value. Uh, in fact, it's associated with being weak or spineless or easy to exploit. When was the last time you saw a bumper sticker with the words American Humility or Union Humble or something like that? Usually they're the reverse. Well, there is a value to humility. I'd like to explore two ways that humility is very important to us for an abundant life. And the first one is the most important. Humility opens the door for us to have a living relationship with God. And Jesus, uh, in Matthew chapter 18, picked up a child and put him in the midst of the disciples. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like a child, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Well, when my autistic grandson gets stuck on a problem, Instead of having a meltdown, he says, I need help. Well, that's a really good picture of the humility of a child. Children know they need help, and they're not afraid to ask for it. On the other hand, proud people like me when I'm driving are too proud to stop and ask for directions. I discovered Mission Hills, Kansas in 1984 while I was trying to find KU Med Center. Why? Because I wasn't asking for directions. Now, my being lost was kind of a funny story. Being eternally lost is not. Humility helps us to be willing to ask God for directions. The humble person can ask God to teach them how best to live. We drop the we know attitude. Instead, we ask God, what do I need to know? The second thing about humility is that it's essential to sobriety. Several of my AA friends have highlighted that to me. And so today I googled the two words humble and sobriety and I found out that there's over 2.3 million websites devoted to the subject. I suppose it is important. And so I found a couple of paragraphs I'd like to share with you and they're good for people in, in recovery but they're also good for all of us. So let's listen. Humility means that people are not afraid to ask questions. People who ask questions may feel stupid for a few moments but people who never ask questions will always remain stupid. Another one, humble people find it's easy to pick up new knowledge. They're always learning new and useful things. 
This is because they do not arrogantly assume they already have all the answers. Another one, if people hope to follow a spiritual path in recovery, they'll find out that developing humility will be a key ingredient. We've just talked about that with the children. People with this attitude, humility, are far less likely to relapse. They won't become overconfident or begin to take their sobriety for granted. They will cherish their life away from addiction. And then the last one, humble individuals are never short of friends. They're just so easy to be around that people cherish their company. That is so true for all of us. So humility is a wonderful value. The flip side of humility, pride, is the world's pain. Uh, I didn't do a Google search on pride, but the author of Proverbs has this to say. It's very familiar. Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Prophet Jeremiah wept over God's people. Why? Because of pride. They were going to be destroyed because they chose to not listen to God in their pride. Here's how I put it, Jeremiah 13, 17. He says, if you will not listen, my soul will weep in secret for your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly and run down like tears because the Lord's flock has been taken captive. Why do they not listen? Because of their pride. Well, if we desire to leave pride and embrace humility, we're going to have to learn from the best example of all, who is Jesus. Uh, in humility, Jesus never came to the Father with the statement of, we know, full of his own best thinking. Jesus wants us to know the source of abundant life, power, personality, joy, and everything else that he has in his being, and that is humility. I want to read a number of statements from John's Gospel to try to overload us with how much Jesus thought about surrendering himself in humility to the Father. So let's get started. John 5, 19, the Son can do nothing on his own but only what he sees the Father doing. John 5, 30, I can do nothing on my own. I seek to do not my will, but the will of him who sent me. John 5, 41, I did not accept glory from human beings. 6, 38, I've come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. 7.16, Jesus answered, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. John 8.28, I do nothing on my own, but I speak these things as the Father instructed me. 8.42, I did not come on my own, but he sent me. 8.50, I do not seek my own glory. John 14.10, the words that I say to you, are not, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. John 14.24, the word that you hear is not mine but it's from the Father who sent me. The source of Jesus' life was one of being in alignment with the Father. He never came to the Father with the words, I know and you should listen to me, but he came to the Father and says, what are you doing and how can I join you? So how do we learn the Jesus kind of humility that he evidenced? Well, first of all, we have to desire it. Overcoming ourself, our know-it-all attitude, our ingrained arrogance is not easy. So we have to resolve to live like Jesus in his humility. That will get us started. I want to give you number two and three, which have to do with praying and connecting with God. So let's number two is let's get acquainted better with Jesus by reading about his life in the Gospels. And I like to suggest that you read and you pray, and you read and you pray. The Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you will meet with him there, he will transform your life. Pride will fade away. Humility will come more and more. Another way of praying is to daily tell the Holy Spirit that you're dependent on him for the day. So before I pick up my Bible, before I start praying, I say to the Holy Spirit, Lord, I need you. Please lead me. Please guide me. Please empower me. Show me the way. Uh, and then I ask him to, to lead me throughout my whole day. So I suggest that to you, that you try that out. And then the fourth way that we can embrace humility is to emphasize our need for humility with the Lord. So we ask him, Lord, give me your humility. 
Uh, there's a couple of verses that I've referenced in my notes. Psalm 51, 17 and Isaiah 57, 15. And they say that God is blessed when we have a broken and a contrite heart. A contrite heart is a crushed heart. It's one that is moldable and is able to be put wherever God wants it to be. So I, I encourage you, let's all seek God's humility today. All right, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for what you've done with us. Now, Lord, help us, we pray, to live a Jesus kind of humility in our lives for your glory and our good. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being a part of uh, this video, and I pray that God blesses you richly. I'll see you tonight at 7 o'clock as we hear Brian English talk about this on the Maywood Facebook page.